Hi, this is Dr. Donald Pelto, and I'm going to be talking for a few minutes here about preventing and treating common athletic injuries. This is actually going to be a presentation I'll be doing for Greendale Physical Therapy, and for any of those that couldn't be present, I just wanted to provide the information to you so you can learn more about it. The first portion I want to talk about is really what this, what this thing is called, the patient dilemma. And this is a dilemma that we see, that physical therapists see, that a lot of other doctors see. And the problem is, is that patients tend to get injured while working out. And there are athletic injuries. They could be from running, they could be from walking, they could be just from walking around the block. It doesn't need to be a lot of activity, but people just tend to get injured pretty easily. And once they get injured, they lose that routine or that rhythm of working out. And, and people don't want to stop working out. So our main focus when treating people that are athletes is different than someone that, for example, isn't an athlete. Uh, someone that is an athlete tends to be a type A personality, uh, is always busy, always wants to be active, and always wants to keep being active. And that's where physical therapy really comes in for treating a lot of these types of foot injuries that people have. A another thing that can happen is people get sad, they get depressed, they lack motivation, or they lose their motivation, tend to gain weight, and everything else kind of goes down the hill for them, and, and they just... Uh, that's what the problem is and that's why treating athletes is something that's special and a little bit more challenging so we're going to talk about some of the these common um, problems that can happen with athletes now this is specifically for you if you have gotten injured when you're working out a lot of people have have injured themselves when working out and they want to get better quicker if you want to avoid an injury and if you think that your foot pain is just a part of your life Many people think that, well, I've, I've always had foot pain. Foot pain is just normal for me, and there's nothing I can really do about it. Well, I'm here to tell you differently. You know, foot pain isn't always a part of your life. It doesn't have to be. And we want to go over a, a few treatment uh, protocols. Uh, what we're going to cover today is how to diagnose and treat common athletic injuries. Uh, these aren't injuries that only happen with athletes. They happen with a lot of other people. But typically, athletes... Uh, these, these, these happen in them. And we're going to talk about three different areas on the foot. We're going to talk about problems in the front of the foot called the forefoot, problems in the middle of the foot, or problems in the rear of the foot. Those are the three main divisions that we see of your foot. And depending on where your, where your injury is, uh, it, it's usually divided into that, that segment of your foot. So we'll kind of look at these. Now the one thing I, I don't want you to worry because you, you'll be saying, well, you're going to cover a lot of things. Where can I learn about this later? Or how can I learn about this later? I've put all this online for you in, in a foot pain toolkit. And you can find this foot pain toolkit at uh, my website, drpelto.com. Up in the right, upper right hand corner, you can see a, a foot pain toolkit that can, that can help you. Okay, that has all this information. And as you can see here, uh, the first page is this diabetes foot book heel conditions, front of the foot conditions, middle of the foot conditions, and toenail conditions. And there's a lot of other things on there as well about diabetes. Now, the two key points that we always stress with our patients are progress, not perfection, and then having a positive focus. Really, uh, try to consistently get better is more important than getting better right away. The same thing with, with getting physically fit. To get a little bit better every day is better than trying to get better completely. I remember back when I was a kid, we, uh, we were training for the mile run and uh, and uh, I was training and what I thought about training was was I would practice the night before so that uh, that's what I, I thought would entail of getting ready for the one mile run so when I was in the in my basement and I was running around my little circle that I had in the basement and I did that for about 20 minutes so I was exhausted and that's what my equivalent of preparing for my my mile run at school was and what I've learned later on in life is that it's about progress the same thing if it's, it's better to run about five or ten minutes a day than it is to say oh, I'm gonna run 50 minutes every single day and not do anything it's better to have something that's doable there's an, a, a very good book that I recommend called the slight edge it's a it's a very good book if you if you google it you'll be able to find it it talks about making these little steps in our lives both in order to get physically fit in order to uh, lose weight in order to stay healthy all of these are, are very important there's little decisions that we make every day and if we make the correct decisions every day, we, we go in the right direction for our lives. And the second thing I think that's very important for the athletes is to have a positive focus. Uh, focusing on what are the good things, what you can do instead of what you can't do. For example, if you have a, a foot injury, you, there may be a lot of things that you think you can't do anymore, 
but there are other things that you you are still able to do uh, because of your your foot injury. So look at that. Can you work on your upper body? Can you work on swimming? Can you work on other types of things that can help you? Okay, so let's let's go on and let's start looking at the the, the beginning part. We're going to start with the heel conditions. So the most common heel conditions that I see with with athletic injuries are, as you can see here, plantar fasciitis, Achilles tendonitis, and then something called a Haglund's deformity. So, so to begin, if you look here, uh, plantar fasciitis is usually on the bottom of the heel, right about there, on, on the, we call it the plantar medial aspect of the heel. It's quite painful. People tend to have more pain when they get up in the, in the morning, and it tends to get better as they're doing more walking, and then as they as they relax again, everything tightens up. This ligament right down here, this plantar fascia, tightens up. Now the interesting thing is if you look, there's, there's plantar fascia right here. And then attached to the back of the heel, if you look up here, is the Achilles tendon. Right here, the Achilles tendon. And so Achilles tendonitis and plantar fasciitis very, go hand in hand. And, and they're both treated about the same way. And, and we'll talk about that in a little bit. Now one of the other consequences of a tight Achilles tendon is developing a little sac of fluid called a bursal sac. It can, it can be a little fluid filled sac right in the back of your heel where the bone can rub and, th and that's called a Haglund's deformity and it's something that's is, is well treatable. Now I don't want you to worry again remember all of this stuff can be found on this on this website under the heel pain and plantar fasciitis section you just click it and it'll open it up to that area for you. So let's start looking at the, the causes of heel pain. So those three types of heel pain usually what happens is people try to do too much activity too fast. So someone maybe walks a couple of minutes and they start trying to walk a couple of miles. Or someone goes from walking on a hard surface and then goes to a soft surface or vice versa. Or they even try to do more activity with the shoes that are too old or shoes that don't have the proper support or the proper cushion in them. That's typically what I see with, with people. And, and what, what tends to happen is most people, they, they delay in getting it treated. So their heel starts to hurt, whether it be from Achilles tendonitis or plantar fasciitis, which are the, most, the two most common. The Haglund's deformity, once again, which is on the back of the heel, is, is more due to a rubbing of the shoe, rubbing of the shoe on the back of the heel. These, these other two conditions are more due to an overuse injury. And once it gets inflamed, it, it, it's kind of like a, a vicious cycle that keeps getting inflamed, and you have to calm the area down for it to recover. And there's always two things we, we look at. We look at, well, what, what's the problem? And, like, what are the symptoms? So usually the symptoms that you're feeling are different than what the underlying problem is or the underlying cause is. So we'll, we'll look at kind of some of the reasons there. And, and some of the people, some questions that people ask me, well, is, is it a heel spur? And, and people say, well, I need to remove the heel spur, the heel spur is causing it. Now for the Haglund's deformity, that bump, pump bump on the back of the heel, that's usually the spur. But on the bottom of the heel, very rarely does the heel cause you a problem. The problem is, is usually caused by that, that tight ligament that you can have down there. And then everyone asks me, is it due to my weight? Well, reducing some weight is certainly going to help, but you can have people that are very slender and others that aren't slender, and they, they all have plantar fasciitis. They all have these conditions of Achilles tendonitis as well. But certainly weight it does contribute. So let's look a little bit more at, at the anatomy. Uh, the crux of the problem for, for both of these, for actually all of these conditions, is, is the calf muscles. The calf muscles is made up of the gastroc and the soleus. The soleus is right here a little bit deep to the area, and where the gastroc and the soleus combined is called the Achilles tendon. And the Achilles inserts into the back of the heel, and, and, and that's, that's the whole challenge. If this area is tight, usually it's tight in the muscle belly, it's just not working well and it's not moving as well. And it has extra pull on the Achilles tendon, that's where people can get Achilles tendonitis. And, and even eventually Achilles tendon tear. If we loosen up these muscles, that's able to reduce the pull on the Achilles tendon and then it tends to feel better. So what are some ways that you can reduce the pull on the Achilles tendon? One, you can put something underneath the heel. If you put a lift underneath the heel, it's going to reduce some of the pull on the Achilles tendon. Or you can massage out these muscles and that can reduce a little bit of the pull on the Achilles tendon. The tendon itself is a very, very thick fibrous substance and it's hard to stretch the tendon itself. You can uh, take some uh, different tools, they're called Graston Technique tools, and they can massage out a little bit of that area. So this is kind of a side view. You put the, the gastroc, and then deep to it is the soleus, and then you have the whole Achilles tendon. 
the whole problem though with with uh, plantar fasciitis and Achilles tendonitis is, is usually due to the muscles in the back of the leg because the muscles just aren't moving as well. So you have these two muscles, but you also have other muscles on the side of the side of the leg. And I'll kind of give you an example. In in your arm muscle, it, if you move your arm like this, it, it's moving fine. But if I if I flex these muscles and I and I and I can't move my arm, well, is, is the problem the the elbow joint is the problem my arm or is it the problem that the muscles are too tight usually the problem as you can see on this picture here is the problem is the muscles are too tight and, and and it's not letting the joints move as well and that's the same thing that happens with these muscles here if these muscles aren't moving well it's not allowing the the the, the foot to move as well and it's it's also just putting undue strain on the Achilles tendon and as well on the plantar fascia so let's look a little bit more about how do we diagnose this? What are the symptoms that we're going to find? Well, for, for plantar fasciitis and Achilles tendonitis, um, it's going to be a little bit different. So plantar fasciitis, you're going to push on the bottom of the heel right here, where that dot is. That's called the plantar medial aspect of the heel. If you push right there, most people have pain Okay, with plantar fasciitis. Sometimes it can be more in the center, sometimes it can be more on the side, and, that, and that's typical for plantar fasciitis. If it's more in the arch region, you might be looking at another condition that's a little bit beyond this talk, but there's a there's a tendon that pulls down the big toe joint called the flexor hallucis longus, and that sometimes it can become irritated as well. And uh, th that's typically with plantar fasciitis. Sometimes you can find a, a spur, but like I said before, the spur usually isn't the problem. Usually the problem is this tight fascia that's down there. Now for Achilles tendonitis, you're you're going to see on the back of the heel there's going to be pain right right where this finger is right here on the back of the Achilles tendon. By pushing there or squeezing there you're going to have some some pain and if there's a bump, usually the bump is actually on the other side of the ankle uh, and you can see a big bump right here, that's called a Haglund's deformity and that's where the bump is on the outside on the other side and people even they can get uh, some rubbing on there and and that rubbing can can hurt especially if people wear so for example clogs or um, pumps, uh, ladies wear pumps and they get something called a pump bump, a bump back there from the rubbing uh, and the irritation that can cause Achilles tendonitis. If there's a lot of pulling, it can cause tearing, and uh, it can it can be quite painful for people. So that's kind of how you, how you diagnose. You diagnose it by pushing on there. And and how do you treat it? Really, the way you you treat it, there can be topical treatments such as uh, icing, uh, biofreeze, and different types of things topical that you can put on there. Most people try that before they come and see us. You can try different shoes. Uh, a shoe that's a motion control shoe can be very very helpful for this as well some type of an insert that stabilizes the foot by putting the foot in more of a stable position with an orthotic or some type of an insert it can help uh, as well stretching exercises such as trigger point and physical therapy uh, those can be very very helpful medications like Motrin or ibuprofen and uh, some stronger ones maybe a Medrol dose pack a, a methylprednisone if needed and then uh, some type of a surgery may be, may be needed as well now let's look at uh, specifically some of the since we're doing talking about physical therapy uh, some of the, the therapy modalities that can be used first of all there's stretching this is called a night splint and this can be used for both Achilles tendonitis because it stretches the Achilles tendon and the plantar fascia it's strapped on there's one that's made for the front of the foot called the dorsal night splint and there's also one that happens on the the back of the area that's called a posterior night splint and this can be worn most insurances cover this and holds it in the 90 degree angle or a little bit more. That puts stress in, and stretches this out. Uh, some people, before they come and see us, they try, to, try different type of stretching exercises. Uh, these are all, all passive and, and so pretty much you're, you're, you're stretching it and uh, by extending your toes, by pushing off against the wall and doing a calf stretch on the stairs. All those can be uh, helpful for people, but it's not really keeping the, the athletes very active. And I know if you are watching this and you're an athlete, you want to keep active. So what are some of the active stretches that you can do? You can do deep tissue massage to the area. That's uh, an example of kind of pushing in there, moving around all the, all the ligaments and all the fascia in there. That can be helpful. Chiropractic adjustments as well. You can do uh, more of an active with a Graston technique by kind of taking this piece of metal and rubbing it on the bottom of the heel and the back of the calf. That can be very, very helpful. And as well, there's trigger point tools. These are some tools that we use to loosen up the back of the calf muscles. Once again, as, as I explained, there are, there are a lot of mu muscles in the back of the leg, and it's not just the gastroc and the soleus. There's the posterior tibial, there's the peroneals, and, and all these contribute into the foot not functioning as well. And if they're tight or dehydrated, 
it can make your heel pain worse. A lot of times by just doing this therapy with the trigger point tools in the office with someone and then having them walk afterwards, a, a, a major portion of their heel pain can be improved. That's why physical therapy and these types of modalities are, are so, so important. And a lot of people always wonder, well, are you going to give me a shot? Well, I, we don't always give shots, but uh, here's how we do the shot. The, what type of needle that we use, the type of syringe. We put in lidocaine and marcaine. Those are short and long-acting steroids. And then a different a kind of a concoction of two different types of steroids, a, a long and an acting, long and a short-acting novocaine, the lidocaine and marcaine, and long and short-acting steroid with the Kenalog and dexamethasone. And we, we always put it right in the, uh, in the medial, in the inside aspect of the heel region. Sometimes we go straight on the bottom if we think it may be a, a bursa, but for the most part we, we go right in here on the side. So if you want to learn how to do that. That's typically how we treat um, the plantar fasciitis. For the Achilles tendonitis, we don't ever do injections uh, of a cortisone because it's been known to weaken the area. With the uh, Haglund's deformity, if there's a, a bursa that's inflamed and if we can make sure that we get it in the bursa and not in the Achilles tendon, sometimes we can do an injection in that area. You can also use a, a walking boot or a cast to offload the area. You may want to do a custom orthotic or an insert that goes in your shoe that can help it as well. But these, these conditions, they can be quite difficult for patients and, and that's where I like the more active physical therapy modalities to get people better along with the icing and, 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 and the anti-inflammatories to help people get better with these conditions. So I, I think that explains a, a, the majority of the, the main heel conditions that we see with, uh, with, with uh, heel pain and different types of uh, pain in the back of the heel. We're going to move on now to the, we talked about the back of the foot, to the, the rear foot, now we're going to talk about the front of the foot. In the, in the front of the foot, there's a, a lot of different conditions, but the, the main three we're going to talk about are the neuroma, metatarsalgia, and ingrown toenails. There's a lot of other conditions that can happen in the front of the foot, but these are some of the most common ones that we see, along with breaks and, and, and things like that that can happen. A neuroma is, is typically a pinched nerve that's in the, in the middle of the foot. Uh, we, it's usually found between the third and the fourth, fourth metatarsal head, and it feels like a numbness or a shooting or a tingling pain to the tips of the toes. Uh, it tends to be more painful in shoes, and it tends to hurt uh, a little bit less when you're, when you're barefoot. I, I have one, and it hurts me more when I, I'm going up and down on wood stairs because it pinches it, and it causes a kind of a little shooting pain to that area, or a shoe that doesn't have any cushion in it, one of these uh, fashionable uh, Italian-made dress shoes. They don't work as well. Uh, metatarsalgia is a pain to the metatarsal. As you can see, the metatarsal are all these bones right here. These, these bones right here, these bones right here. And in the front of the foot, when you put a lot of pressure to the front of the foot, the metatarsal can become painful. Now you have to make sure it's not the, the sesamoids. These are these two little bones underneath the big toe joint. They can sometimes be painful, but usually metatarsalgia happens when someone's bending down or walking or they may have a callus under the area that can be, become painful and that callus can get so thick and push and, and injure the bone. Sometimes there can be a little bit of a bone bruise. Sometimes there can be a little sack of fluid called a bursa in the area as well. well. Talk a little bit about that. And there's ingrown toenails are very, very common for athletes. And uh, the way you treat that is uh, you have to first realize you have it and then remove a little wedge of the nail to, to make it feel better. If you remove a little wedge of the nail, that usually makes it feel better. But if it keeps coming back, there's a little procedure where we can move a little wedge of the nail and then put some medicine back here. And that can actually uh, cauterize or, or kill the, the nail root so it's not going to grow back anymore. So let's go on. Now once again, don't worry, this is all going to be explained in this uh, online uh, foot pain toolkit you can get at the website. Okay, And I'm also going to, in, in the, in the uh, class, I'm going to hand out a, something where you can sign up, give me your name and email and I'll sign you up for this and send you all this information that you need. So let's look at the neuroma. The neuroma typically, uh, you have a clicking sound when you when you compress the front of the foot. You take the front of the foot and you can kind of compress it, and there's a clicking sound usually between the third and fourth metatarsals. Uh, it feels better without shoes, painful on hard surfaces. The way you treat it is with wider shoes and sometimes a cortisone injection. The same cortisone injection that we did for the 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 heel pain is the same one that we use in here. Sometimes you can use a different type of a chemical called. Uh, a sclerosing agent using a dehydrated alcohol that can be used sometimes. You can try orthotics as well, some inserts that go in the, in the foot to reduce the pressure to that area and uh, as well if, if that's not getting better you can remove the area. Uh, a lot of patients with neuromas they, they come and go. 
depending on how active you are, it gets swollen and red, as you see in the picture, and then it kind of calms down after a while. Uh, if, it, if it really just bothers you over a long period of time, it's best just to remove that area. It's, it's funny, the, that nerve is one of the only nerves that is typically removed in, in the body. And, it's, and it, the only problem is after you remove it, just so everyone knows, you're going to be numb between these two toes. So typically there's numbness, and sometimes there can be some scarring in that area. If you're a big scar former, uh, be careful because that scarring can be painful on the nerve and it can be painful on the skin. And so scarring is always a, a problem after surgery. Okay. Uh, the next thing I want to talk about is uh, metatarsalgia. That's painful uh, area to the metatarsal, the bones usually to the front of the foot. Now these are two little sesamoid bones and sometimes these can be painful as well. Uh, be careful though, if, if, you're, if you're trying to diagnose for metatarsalgia, be careful. You have to get an x-ray because sometimes you can have a break in the bone called a stress fracture that it could be missed. And uh, if after you got an x-ray and everything is fine, there's no break in there, then the solution is, is to try some padding. There's some really great pads. They're called Dr. Jill's pads. They're metatarsal pads. You can put right there. They stick right on there. They work great. You can also uh, do the some calf stretching. And, and I'll kind of explain how that works. If the back of your calf is very, very tight, uh, what happens is it puts more pressure to the front of foot. So if you imagine that kind of this is your, this is your, this is your foot here, and this is your calf, and if I squeeze the calf, it usually pushes down on the front of the foot. Well, if I, if I squeeze and it pushes down, if I can loosen up this so it's not as tight, it's, it's not letting it go down as much and it's not putting as much pressure to the front of the foot when people are walking. So by loosening up the calf muscles, it can reduce the pressure to the front of the foot. Orthotics as well can be helpful to reduce the pressure by putting some pads in different areas, and as well, injections can help uh, if there's more of a fluid buildup or a problem in the joint. Now, it's interesting. I, I didn't mention uh, curved toes or hammer toes or bunions. Most people with athletes, a lot of people have them, but if they're not painful, we don't fix them. We can fix uh, bunions, we can fix hammer toes if they become painful. Usually what happens is they get painful in the shoes. They, get, they rub too much or they develop calluses or sores on the tips of them and we have to treat them. But these are one of the, some of the more common ones that we, we see in the office. And then also ingrown toenails. Here on the edge of the toenail, it, it's painful usually from rubbing or irritating in the shoes. Uh, once again, trying a wider shoe can help trim out the nail and then you can kill the nail root. As a, as a last option. So these are some of the, the foot problems that we see in the front of the foot. Uh, some of the other ones you could see is thickening of the toenail, such as nail fungus that can be treated as well uh, with uh, different types of uh, laser therapy or heat therapy or even oral antifungals, antifungal medications. And uh, so those are kind of the, the options for that. So those are the, the, uh, the front of the foot uh, conditions. Now let's go on to the, the middle of the foot conditions. The middle uh, of the foot condition, so if you think we talked about the front of the foot, once again there can be hammer toes and bunions there, the heel conditions, now we'll talk about what, what's happening in the middle of the foot. What's normally happening in the middle of the foot is the flattening. You see how this foot flattens out? And that would be a pulling on the posterior tibial tendon, okay? And there's also a tendon on the side of the foot called the peroneal tendon. Once again, all of these are in this middle of the foot condition area. Uh, it can be painful in the arch. So if you have a real flat arch like this where your toes go out to the side, that can cause a lot of uh, fatigue. It can, ca it can cause a collapsing of the foot. Uh, the best treatment initially before the tendon is irritated or injured, see this tendon can be overstretched and become painful and torn, and that can become a, a big problem. So orthotics are recommended or even a bracing. The main difference is that an orthotic goes under the foot and a brace goes up to the ankle area and gives more stability uh, in the joint region. Okay, so that's kind of what we, what we recommend. I think I have an example. This is an example for my talk tonight. I'll show it to you. This is one type of a, of a brace that I'm going to bring and show. This is a little exaggerated for what you would need for this type of a condition. It's an it's a Arizona brace, but there are different types of braces as well. Um, so I'm going to show you here some type of, a, of an orthotic. This is a custom orthotic that we put in there, in someone's foot, under their foot. Okay, so that can be very helpful. Some of the tendonitis is, uh, like I mentioned before, the posterior tibial tendon, this is the one that holds up the arch of the foot, and there's also the peroneals, which, which pronate. So one pulls up on one side, this side, and one pulls up on the other side. So one's flattening and one's actually lifting the arch. So they're kind of working against each other. And um, if you have pain on the bottom of the foot, on one of these two sides, it may be uh, caused up here. And a lot of times the pain is, happens as it goes around the ankle joint, the medial malleolus here. And if it goes around there, it can become torn because it's it's constantly going back and forth in that area and that can become torn and people can get uh, kind of fatigued to that area. 
So those are the main uh, tendon problems that, that people see uh, with these conditions. So um, I, want, I want to stop at this point and, and ask if any of you have any, any questions, you can certainly email them to me at don at worcesterfootcare.com and that's, that's where you can answer some of the, uh, ask any of the questions that you may have. These are the typical uh, foot conditions that I see. I didn't want to cover too many, I wanted to cover the big ones that most people have likely seen or heard about. And then what, what I want to do as well, I just want to take a moment here to show you how you can learn more. Uh, once again, you can email me, but you can also go to the, this website here, uh, drpelter.com, and I just want to show you uh, what will happen when you pull up to that website. So here's kind of the, the website that will pull up. This is uh, talking about the, the talk that we're going to be doing, that we did do already, and uh, Dr. Pelto's blog, drpelter.com. This is how you get to it. And if you click to the foot pain toolkit, it's kind of a little toolkit that I put together that I just wanted to sh show you. And if you want to learn more about any of these conditions or other conditions that I may have, you can click on this. Now, the first thing is this foot pain toolkit, uh, foot pain book. This is a book that we, we worked on with, with Sneakerama, and I have a copy right here. It's actually, I don't know how many pages, it looks like about 70, 70 pages of information that talks about all these different, difficult, different foot conditions that you may see. And it's all in one big document. You can just download that by clicking that uh, for anyone. I put it together along with Dr. Feldman and Dr. Lucius as well as here's the information we talked about heel pain it's going to open up this is a presentation I did on heel pain diagnosis of it uh, different types of problems called sinus tarsi syndrome heel pain Achilles tendon disorders peroneal tendon posterior tibial tendon and these are some surgeries that we do this is specifically one of the surgeries that we do uh, it's called the um, Achilles speed bridge this is made this is for the um, that um, for that Haglund's deformity we talked about so what you do is if you click that it's going to take you to this website and you'll be able to actually see uh, how the surgery is done. So this is the Achilles speed bridge. Uh, if someone has a big bump in the back, you actually just open up the, uh, the back of the Achilles, you slit it on each side, and you go and you remove this bump with, the, with your saw, and then you actually create two drill holes, uh, one, one here, one here, and then one here, and one here. And after you do those drill holes, you, you, uh, after you remove the bump, then you take and you reattach this. Uh, and, and the neat thing about this condition is that in the past we used to use a lot of um, stitches. And the stitches, when you tie them off, they, they create a, um, a big knot. And that becomes a problem. So with this new system, it's called tenodesis. It just means where you make two holes, you put little plugs in there that are absorbable and, uh, and uh, you put two below. And then when you screw the other ones in, with the with kind of the the suture in there with that that string in there it's actually going to pull down pull down the the uh, the Achilles tendon into the into the proper location for you so you can see now there's going to be a couple of uh, stitches you're going to pass through there okay and then you pull on the other two and then you drill two holes down here and you crisscross them as you put them in there and that's going to hold that Achilles down and the nice thing is in the past we used to just tie those uh, str strings together but at this point we don't do that anymore we can just put in these little plugs and it pulls them down nice and nice and easy you see how it pushes them in there and you pull on the other one and pushes them down nice and easy and you just cut off these and you close everything so that's kind of a neat uh, a neat example of something that we do in there uh, for that for that treatment there's also something that we do for heel pain called the topaz procedure this is kind of an interesting procedure that you can do uh, and you make a little guide at the bottom of the heel right here and you make little dots as you can see little dots around there and then you take this little probe and you probe in there and uh, every time you this is actually with a with a K wire before a little wire you use it before and then you use this little probe and you go and you you break through the plantar fascia and that can be used to help with the, uh, with the heel pain and this just kind of looks at the uh, going in there with it. So this is kind of a neat, neat way of treating the uh, the plantar fasciitis. We used to go in there and cut the bottom of it, and very rarely we have to do that now. Okay, and and these are just a couple of uh, braces that we use. Uh, this is uh, one that we use for the posterior tibial tendonitis. Um, kind of showing you how we use it for different types of foot conditions. That if the foot really, really rotates out, it can help people with this. 
kind of gives a little bit of the anatomy and then shows how the brace kind of holds on the bottom of the foot and puts everything back into alignment. So this is very, very helpful. Like I said, it goes up to the ankle level for people and that's very helpful for them for that, with that type of a brace can help different types of tendon dysfunction. So that's some information about the, the back of the foot, uh, some of the front of the foot conditions, uh, the, the, some arthritis in the big toe joint, hammer toe we talked about briefly, bunions, that neuroma condition, uh, breaks in the, in the foot, and uh, other types of front of the foot pain. Um, this is an interesting procedure that is fairly new that, that people tend to like. It's called the CPR procedure. And uh, what, what's done with this one is it's, it's let me just sure. turn this off here. What's done with this is we actually do a cut over the top, and this is for a, a, a toe that's kind of stuck up in the air. They have a hammer toe, and it's really painful in the bottom. And there's usually a tear in something called the plantar plate. I just want to show you that again. Just pause it. You see this tear right here? That's a tear in the plantar plate, and that can be, be painful. And this is a, a procedure. What we do is we actually lift up the, the bone, and uh, we're able to go in there and, and kind of... Uh, we first need to get the bone out of the way, so we have to push that bone backwards, okay? By, by pushing the bone backward, we're able to get to this area and, uh, and clean up this, this plantar plate that's torn. We're able to hold it in place. Usually we use just, just one, one screw afterwards to hold it, one K-wire in there, okay? So then ne next what we do is cut off this little portion of uh, this extra ledge of bone, and then uh, we, we take and we open up the joint as far as possible, okay? And then I'm, I go in there and I cut it off the base. And then we need to re reattach it though. So we have to kind of file it up and then we have to reattach it so it's not torn anymore. So we take this little scor mini scorpion, they call it. And uh, this is the kind of the most, the coolest thing about this procedure. And you're able to bring it up through and you have to kind of put it into this bone. You kind of thread it through. And that's able to pull it back in and hold it into place. And once you do that, you have to tie it off. Now this one is, is, is an instance where we uh, actually tie it and so we don't we don't care about a, a, a knot up there and you put in one little little screw up on top to hold this in place this bone in place and then you pull it together and you tie it and that's able to heal that tear that was there this is good for people that have a um, a toe that's uh, quite dislocated so it can be quite helpful for that okay so that's one surgical approach for that um, there's there's a lot of other conditions we see in the front of the foot you can certainly read about that on your own and then middle of the foot conditions. Once again, we talked about the peroneal tendon injuries and the, and the posterior tibial tendon injuries. Okay, that can happen. Um, just want to show you this. This is uh, actually a document that you can just open on your computer and it'll uh, open up like this. And so you can kind of look at that on your own. Okay. And then down here I also have some children foot conditions and toenail conditions and then some skin conditions that explain a little bit more about warts and uh, that's something that we typically see and uh, in other kids conditions such as flat feet and things like that. Uh, children's footwear and different types of children's foot conditions, children's shoes. So that's kind of what we have on this on this website and the foot pain toolkit. Um, the other thing on, on the blog, just, uh, just in, in ending here, if anyone has anyone or knows anyone that has diabetes and you'd like to learn more about that, you can sign up for one of these free books here. If you click the free book, um, it has diabetes information, that foot book, the regular foot book that we talked about, and then about foot wound healing. So if you have the diabetes information, you can pretty much just click here, put your name and email on here, and it'll send you that information from the diabetes toolkit. So you put your name and email, and it'll send you that. If you want to go back and actually see where, where that goes to, it goes to the diabetes toolkit. And very similar to the foot toolkit, the diabetes toolkit has information about diabetes, an introduction about feet, about wound healing, basics, medications, losing weight, kidneys, teeth, and eyes. So in each one of these, once again, there's a little video talking about diabetic retinopathy. So if you have any loved ones that has, uh, has diabetes and you'd like to share that with them, I uh, hope you enjoy it. So once again, hope you enjoyed this presentation and these resources. Uh, all of them can be found at uh, drpelto.com. Thank you.